How are we doing tonight? Come on now, we invite you to stand with us. You know, as we said on Sunday, there's some new construction on our platform. We are getting a faith lift. Amen? So because of that tonight, we have an acoustic worship set, a little bit different. But it's the same God, the same Holy Ghost, able to save, heal, and deliver. So whatever your need is tonight, God is able. Now, are you ready to worship Him together? Shout, yeah! Yeah! I was lost with a broken heart. You picked me up, now I'm set apart. From the ash, I'm born again. Is that your testimony? Forever safe in the Savior's hand. You are more than my words can say. I'll follow you, Lord, for all my days. Fix my eyes, follow in your way. Forever free and unending grace. Now come on, let's tell them, say, you are, you are, you are, you are. My free we live. Never ending. Of the darkest night, I let your love be the shining light, breaking chains that were holding me. You sent your son down to set me free. That everything of this world will fade. I'm pressing on till I see your face. I will live that your will be done. Let's declare this out. Say, you are my freedom. Say, you are, you are, you are my freedom. Ah, yes, you are. Say it again. Say, you are, you are, you are my freedom. Thank you for the great work you've done in us. Say it again. Say, you are, you are, you are my freedom. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Say, you are. Make it big church all together. You are, you are, you are, you are. We lift, we lift you higher. Come on, brag on him. Your love never ending.
Father, we thank you for your goodness. All across the room tonight, can we lift our hands toward heaven to our King? Yeah, yeah. Father, you are alive in us. And we're thankful that you call us your own. We've been bought with a price. We're thankful to be children of the Most High. We worship you and thank you for your amazing love. And you unravel me with a melody. You surround me with song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm going to sing that verse again. And you unravel me with a melody. You surround me with song. Good to know you're never alone. Amen. I'm deliverance from my enemies. Oh, thank you, Lord. Till all my fears are gone. And so we declare this. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Who are you, church? I am a child of God. Oh, amen. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. Thank you, Lord. I am a child. Yeah. And from my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. Yeah. And I've been born again into your family. Yeah. Your blood flows through my veins. Thank you, Lord. And I'm no longer to fear who do you belong to church I am a child of God no longer a slave to fear no longer a slave to fear I'm a child of God yeah. I'm a child of God no, long, no longer a slave to fear no no
know it go ahead and give God some praise in the house come on he brought you from a mighty long way is there anybody that's happy about it tonight hallelujah amen look at somebody near you and let them know you're glad to see them here tonight at World Harvest Church we bless you in the name of the Lord you may be seated we appreciate everybody who's here with us tonight now you probably have noticed that our platform is configured just a little bit differently tonight don't let that throw you off it may look a little different but the Holy Ghost is still the same Holy Ghost here at World Harvest Church somebody say amen and we appreciate Harvest Music Live helping us out tonight now those of you amen amen now those of you who are here for the first time we don't consider you to be visitors we consider you to be guests uh, as a matter of fact, VIP guests, as a matter of fact, you're here for the first time. You can take out your smart device, smartphone, cellular device, and just text VIP to this number that's coming up on your screen right now, right now, right now. I've lost it. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. You text VIP to the number that's going to come up on your screen there momentarily. And here's what's going to happen. When you do that and we get the information from you, we are going to send you a gift from our pastor, Dr. Rod Parsley. And uh, I know that you're going to be blessed by it. But you can only be a, a first-time guest here one time. After that, we consider you to be a member of our family, and we welcome you in the name of Jesus. Let's thank God for everyone who's joining us tonight for the first time. Amen. Amen. Now, there's something else we want to mention to you, and that is in the pew pocket in front of you there, you see a little card that says Next Steps. Next Steps is the opportunity that you have to find out more about who we are and why we do what we do here at World Harvest Church in our next steps class, which is coming up just before you know it. And so what we want you to do, if you've never been a part of that, we'd like you to fill that card out and you can put it in the offering container as it comes by just a little bit later in the service. And we'll let you know all about that and when that opportunity is as well. Amen. Praise God. I want to thank everyone who's joining us online tonight. Uh, all kinds of uh, countries represented from all around the world. We are bigger than everything that we're doing right here in this place. We have an influence that reaches around the world. Is there anybody happy about that? Amen. We don't call ourselves World Harvest Church for no reason. Amen. But I want to share just a verse of scripture with you real quickly tonight. And I, I've got something that I believe will be a blessing to you. And by the way, as Elder Gamain Brunson says, it's offering time here at World Harvest Church. Somebody ought to get happy about that because you're getting ready to sow a seed that's going to change your life and change your future. Somebody say amen. But open your Bibles with me if you would, or if you have them on your cell phone, go ahead and turn to Psalm 5. Psalm 5. I want to point out the last verse in Psalm 5. Here's what the Word of God says in the modern English version. For you, Lord, will bless the righteous... You surround him with favor like a shield. Everybody say favor. 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 Somebody said, what in the world is favor? Well, the, the terminology in the Bible means it, it has to do with somebody delighting in you. Here's what you'll hear Pastor Parsley say about favor. Favor is what it is that causes the person to say yes when you know they ought to say no. 
Favor is the thing that moves your resume all the way to the top of the pile when it started out on the bottom of the pile. Favor is the thing that causes your mortgage application to get that special treatment when you know it doesn't deserve any special treatment. Let me just tell you about some favor that has happened to people here at World Harvest Church just in this resurrection seed season. Is there anybody that would like a little bit of additional favor in their lives, huh? Come on now. I just talked to a lady just a little bit ago, and she said, I went to a dealership to get a car. She said, I believe that God spoke to me to get a red car. I talked to the owner of the dealership, which is favor right off the bat, and there wasn't a red car on the dealership. She said, I went back two, two days later, and the owner came to me and said, I got something for you. He said, here's your car. She said, my car? He said, yeah, it's a red one. That's what you wanted, didn't you? God did a miracle and got her a car of exactly the color that she was believing God for. Look at somebody and say, favor. I talked to somebody just a couple days ago. They said, we applied for a mortgage, and they said, we're going to have to send this mortgage application to the bank headquarters. They said, well, that shouldn't be a problem. Bank headquarters right down the road. They said, no, the bank headquarters is in another country. And it may take 10 days to two weeks to find out. They got their mortgage approved the next day. Somebody say favor. Hallelujah. I, somebody told me just this past weekend that they were looking for a house and it's an incredible story. I can't take time to tell you all about it, but here's the bottom line. There were seven offers on this house. The time for receiving offers was over. And the owner talked to their realtor and said, I want an offer from that couple that you talked to yesterday. The realtor called them and said, the owner said he wants an offer. They said, we can't make an offer because we can't afford the home. The realtor said, okay. He called him back the next day and said, the owner says he wants an offer from you. They said, well, all right. They made an offer and they got moved ahead of seven other offers and got the house. They're living in it right now. Somebody say favor. Here's what happens when you have favor. Here's what it is. I got to hurry. When you got favor, you're surrounded by God's delight. Now listen, if God thinks you're okay, it doesn't matter who doesn't think you're okay. Amen. You're surrounded by God's delight. You're shielded from the flaming missiles of the adversary. The Bible says you'll be surrounded as a shield. And then you're satisfied by good things from God's hand. Now the keys are, the keys are, you got to be, the Bible says here in Psalm 5 verse 12, Lord, you will bless the righteous, the righteous, the, those in right standing with God, those who are obedient to obey his commandments. Amen. Not disobedient. And then not only are you righteous, but thank God you're obedient to do whatever it is that God tells you to do. That includes what to do with your money because it's not your money. It's God's money. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you tonight to get a seed in the ground and believe God for favor. Somebody said, well, I've already got favor. Well, you can't ever have too much favor. Ha! Huh? And I want to encourage everybody here in this place. I want to encourage everybody that's joining us online. I want you to get a seed in the ground tonight, believing God for favor. Here's how you do it. If you're making out a check, make it payable to World Harvest Church, or just simply put a WHC on it. If you're giving by cash, put it in an offering envelope. If you're giving online, just follow the prompts that you see there on your screen. If you're giving by means of a debit card or credit card, fill out the information on that envelope you'll find in the pew in front of you. And if you're giving by your electronic device, once again, you can follow the prompts that are on the screen there and we'll make sure that we receive it from your hand. Here's the thing. I believe that a seed sown tonight will result in favor tomorrow on your behalf. 
I believe you get a seed in the ground right now and there's something coming down the road to you that God is going to turn in your favor. I believe you get a seed in the ground now and God is going to change somebody's mind about you simply because of God's favor operating on your behalf. Somebody needs to say amen. All right. Now, you can, you can agree without it costing you much of anything. Get a seed in your hand. And let's believe God. And let's expect that the next testimony that we shout about is going to be your testimony as a result of the favor of God upon you. Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness and mercy. Thank you for the word of God that tells us about your favor. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the opportunity we have tonight to sow a seed in your kingdom and believe that you're going to change things supernaturally in our favor. We believe you for it tonight. We thank you for it. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. 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 Ushers, go ahead and wait on the folks and enjoy the ministry of Harvest Music Live. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm, I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. And I've seen many searching for answers Far and wide, but I know We're all searching for answers Only you provide because you know What we need before we say
know he works all things for your good. You're working, you're working, you're working, God, you are. Say you're good. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. Who you are. It's who you are. Who you are. It's who you are. I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Now come on, thank him for his goodness tonight. Thank him for his goodness. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. <laughs> Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not. All thou hast been, thou forever will be. You see, that's good news for those of you who are in a fight tonight. As you look back over your life, he delivered you once, he'll do it again. He'll do it again. You see, the one thing that remains the same is change. Everything changes but your heavenly Father. He remains the same. He is faithful to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask or think. Great is thy faithfulness. Come on, church, say. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning. Morning by morning. New mercies I see. Oh, I have needed thy hand has provided. Great is thy faith. Say that again. Great is. Great is thy faith. One more time, say. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Are you happy on a Wednesday night? No, like, are you really happy, 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 happy? We're so glad you're here. Slap somebody a high five and say, just strap in and get ready. Because we will have a time tonight. Lift both hands and say, tonight, I'm changed. Did you, did you hear what Pastor Chris said? He said, the only thing that remains constant is change. That's powerful. I got that. Did you catch that? We beat Deborah George. We put a mitt up and catch that, can't we? <laughs> Hallelujah. So good to see you. Wonderful to see you. You may be seated. We want to pray tomorrow for uh, Elder Yoda and Miss Diana. Uh, because tomorrow they're going to, as I understand, meet with owners of Fort Rapids. Tomorrow they're meeting with them. So they've already been to Congress and they've already been to the Ohio State House and everywhere in between. Tomorrow they're going to meet with the owners. So we're just believing in Jesus' name for favor. Amen. Just reach your hands out and just declare and decree favor in the name of Jesus Christ. To loose the bondages of opioid addiction in the state of Ohio. You put us here for purpose, God, and we will see to it that your word is fulfilled. In Jesus' name, we receive favor. Amen. 
Everybody say this name with me. Say Shirley Scott. Now, you don't know Shirley Scott, but I do. Shirley Scott is the, the wife of the first lady with Pastor Tony Scott. And uh, I did a tremendous amount of work with them in the early 2000s uh, with Silent No More. They're from up in northern Ohio, tremendous pastors. And uh, Shirley has been fighting, uh, I believe, stage four throat cancer and I pray with them every single day twice a day she's undergoing radiation treatment and uh, and we're in Texas and we're just believing God for a miracle and 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 I just I felt all day I I really was awakened by the Lord in the early hours of this morning praying for her specifically and uh, this morning I got a text from Pastor Tony and said, please pray for Shirley because she's, she's uh, feeling like she's choking and, and she's having difficulty swallowing. And, and I remember that, you see. And, and so I identify with that. And uh, so just, if you would, in your Bible or somewhere, take an offering envelope, just write that name down for me. Because I promised him that I'd have hundreds and hundreds of people praying for Shirley. So please pray for her in Jesus' name. They're, they're tremendous pastors and I love them with all of my heart. And look here, Jerry Deal is here tonight. Jerry, out on Wednesday night. Now, listen, Jerry, when is your final radiation treatment? Help me. I thought, it, I thought it was either today or tomorrow. Today. And, and, and it's over now. But how many total have you had? Because I counted them up when I got that text today. 63. Now, what did I have, Tony? 18? Was it 18? 28? Something? 63. And Jerry in church on Wednesday night. I want you to give God praise for keeping power. Now, you can be seated because we've had a little miracle and uh, I'm, I want you to, I, I want you to see it. Like I, I said that this curtain wouldn't go up until Dominion camp meeting. And I appealed for some help because we only had three people uh, on staff. You know, we, there was a time when we employed 120 people just in facilities and building. Here, we employed them. 120 people we rarely ever had less than 20 we operate now with three now that doesn't mean much to you understand we got 600 toilets huh half a million square feet under one roof and so when the holy spirit convicted me and said you need to use your faith about this platform i said well jesus i, I get it i receive it a son loves correction. A son loves correction. And so I received it and I said, well, all right, I'm going to tell the church. And so I appealed for some help because in, in what we needed to do in the next month, we, we just, there was absolutely no way that we could get it done. And I appealed for some volunteers. And I want to publicly thank one of our ushers, a gentleman that's been in this church, I guess 30 years, Matt Croak. And if you ever need remodeling, I'm telling you right now, call Matt Croak. Let his crew come in and help you because he brought his entire crew in here. And they said, I said, how much do we owe you? They said, you don't owe us anything. 
Now I want you to see how much work was accomplished in two days. Okay, raise it up. Two days because of Dream Team members and because of volunteers. Now get ready because you're going to freak out. You're going to have to put some lights up here, guys. It's gone. Do you have the twink light curtains? Or can you turn them on? I don't know if you can or not. They may be unhooked. Okay, so look at this. It, we were scheduled to take 30. That's the way they are. No wonder when I said that, you should have given me a like that. Work with me. So, so uh, I'm amazed at what Harvest Music Live and the lighting crew and television got, got this all in order. Because you can imagine what it looked like when all that came out. It was three giant dumpster loads filled up and overflowing. Do you know how long it took us to build what they took out in two days? Huh? What? Yeah, it took three months. Three months. I like how God said, pull out, tear down, destroy, and then plant and build. So we're ready to start planting and building now. And we're 30 days ahead of schedule. How great is God? So anyway, y'all, bring, bring this down here. Miss Joni, you're going to be more comfortable down here, aren't you? Which one? Okay, put it down there. I make the decision. You didn't have to throw my water everywhere, but... It's okay. We're going to replace the carpet anyway. Just go right ahead. He couldn't see past his beard. Tomorrow, the President of the United States is going to be one mile from our Elkhart, Indiana campus. Tomorrow. He and I think the Vice President is going to be there too. And, but what's going to happen, they're going to close down a bunch of the roads so folk can't get to church. So Elkhart is joining us tonight. So welcome them. They moved their whole service. And I said, well, you, you know, well, if you move it, I mean, Miss Joni is going to be ministering. They said, they said, double attendance. I don't know what it is with y'all. Love Miss Joni so much. I love her so much. Miss Joni. She, she is like a question and answer session. It's the hardest thing to get started, but once you get it started, you can't stop it. I learned this from her when, when on the first date that I took her on, and I mean it's a date too, like I waxed my 1980 L82 Corvette Stingray. I waxed it. I wax my car every week and I washed it every single day. Well, look, I'm like 21 years old. 
I got a 1980 L82 Corvette Stingray brand new off the showroom floor. And I paid for it. I paid for it. And, and I, I was going to take care of it. That's the reason you get better things. Because you take care of what God gives you. That's why I've got a good wife. I take care of her. Everybody knows she take care of me. But on our first date, I remember exactly where we were. We were at 256 and 204, right next to a filling station, a service station that I used to pump gas at. They used to have service stations. You understand? Where you got service. Like they would pump your gas for you, wipe your windows off for you, the whole deal. Well, that was me. That was one of my three jobs at the same time. And so we were at 204 and 256. I was feeling fine. Got the curly mullet. With the, and Miss Joni sitting over there, son. Like I'm not playing. Miss Joni would get your attention from a mile away. She's so beautiful, so gorgeous, and so full of love and joy. She was the most joyful person I ever met. And I got in the car, and she was just. And I just. I went, she said, Am I talking too much? I said, Yeah. No, I didn't. I said, You, you like to talk? She said, Yeah. And she said something about dating, you know, in the church. And I said, Well, I just need you to know. I was being all spiritual. I need you to know. I had my mirror fixed so I could see her. And she wouldn't know I was looking at her. You guys don't know how to do that? You always got to fix your rearview mirror so you can look at them. And, and I said, no, I, I need you to understand. I have an anointing. And uh, I don't date uh, young women in the church. And she said, well, where does that leave me? Well, the end of that story is, I guess where that left you is, I had to marry you. And I love her. I can express to you how much I love her. She is, what you don't know about her is she is one of the most ferocious fighters. I've ever known like she will fight in the spirit she sees something in her life and I'm all the time like why don't you relax and she's like God showed me this and it's coming out of my life or it's coming out of somebody else's life usually mine and she's she's not going to let go bro she is going to get an answer and you don't know that about her because she's always so sweet and nice and that's her nature but her spirit is ferocious and i want to thank her because i would not be here today without her and i love you with all my heart stand up pastor you may salute your bride okay we got her a diet coke I got it for you if you need it. All right, help her, Blair. Amen. Come on, tell her how much you love her. And Elkhart, too. And Elkhart, too. Thank you, Elkhart, for coming. Manny and Hannah, Manna is there, which I'm going to talk about. Um, this whole message was inspired by Julie Deal. She, I'm going to make her stand up. I have one conversation after church, and I, if it made it from Twitter, I don't know. I, social media is really, as many know, uh, not my forte. 
and, um, or is technology really? I just always say, I had a rotary phone, that's my excuse. Um, but um, my, my tweet, Twitter, Twitter, whatever you call it, um, today was, well, thank you, our armor bearer. That was very nice. Um, Oh, goodness, I remember that, whatever that was, date, whatever, where, it was right at 2.56, it was a moment, so, and here I am, so 30 years later. <laughs> I, I may, I may, Maybe you should have interpreted that wrong. I should have said, oh, gotcha. <laughs> and, uh, no, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm glad I... Perse no, yeah. So that's, I, whatever we did, undated for seven, seven years, <clears throat> whatever, since we didn't date, we quote, whatever, sort of. Sort of dated, whatever. Like our sort of engagement. <laughs> And, and, and now the text, oh, okay. Well, anyway, um, oh, well, where was I before I, oh, okay, well, I'll start at, um, after church, um, <laughs> I swear, <laughs> I know you are just so, He's the worst person to sit in church with ever, <laughs> ever. He is like, I could hear the candy coming out that you, I'm, during camp meeting is torturous. It's torture. It's like he's getting paw or something to drink, I'm trying to find the water, uh, taking his shoes on, his shoes off. <sighs> Finding the candy, finding the hanky, finding the lotion, finding chapstick, finding one of the seven pair of glasses. It's, uh, he's like a, like a little, little one. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, um, truly deal after church, we were just chatting and she had a hold of my hands and um, she said that she prayed um, that I would have the manna for my next day and, and the manna that I needed and I went oh. and it just like wasn't one of those things like you just catch I mean it like just exploded because I just saw about a million things come out of that and I said oh my gosh now I get the Lord's Prayer and we talked about that and she just said every morning she asks what is her manna for the day or what is her need for the day and she said her you know her manna that time of strength because she had not been getting much rest they'd been at the hospital a lot and um, I began to think that is it. That's what our daily bread in the Lord's Prayer means. And I mean, we've all said that prayer, especially if you were in Bible school or in you know, like vacation Bible school, not like Valor. But I mean, we can say it right now. Let's just, I should test the young people to see if they know. Um, hmm, who should come up and say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespass as we forgive those who trespass. Deliver us temptation deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen <laughs>
I had to stop for a second. I was, I was thinking of a time I was in this group um, of, <clears throat> we were just in this group and the lady at the end said, well, let's say the Lord's Prayer and since um, Joni here is a pastor's wife, she can lead us in it. Well, I just, you know, had one of those, like, just, you, they happen when you get old, just mine, just, I, I got to, you know, and forgive us our trespasses and I started getting confused about the different, you know, some of them, some people say sin, some people say, and I just was like, blah, 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 and I just said, well, um, I, we have several translations in the Bibles, different Bibles, and I just got, you know, a, a little, you know, so I just made something up, and I don't know what it was, but I just blamed it on some translation I'd read, like, you know, I don't know. The New International Genesis Kingdom Bible. I don't know. They have so many. When you go down that list, you know, in Bible Hub or whatever that's online now. <clears throat> but no more parallel Bibles like we used to have that were like this long. And you could see all the different translations. And you guys have it so easy. But um, so I started thinking about really two significant areas of that. And um, for sake of time, I won't get into everything I wanted to. Um, because I know it's Wednesday and you have had a long day <laughs> and uh, had to be out amongst the world. And um, it, Wednesday is... It's tough. It's tough to fight the traffic. And I, I really you know, admire and thank you for fighting through whatever you had to to get here because it would be a lot easier <laughs> to be home in your jammies or comfies or sweats or outside on a beautiful evening and um, just doing something besides being in the house of God. But... I, I look at it this way, and I was just thinking of this on the front row because this is kind of what my day was like. Uh, really, my week, it's just been this week, you know, everybody has those weeks. And um, where you are ferociously fighting, and I have had one of those weeks. And it reminded me of um, when I was a kid, and, you know, our house we were separated by a big field and there was my grandma and grandpa's house. And the, you know, it was a, we had, uh, we raised cattle. And so, you know, we'd have to cross that field to get to my grandma's or we could go out around the road, but it was quicker to go through the gate and go to her house. Well, there was a lot of cow manure. And so we had to dodge a lot of cow manure. Or cow piles, pat, patty, we call it, we call them cow patties or whatever. And if you ever stepped in one, well, you know, it's, you know, but that's, well, and they're always, it's green and yucky and, and, uh, um, and I would invariably do that because you can't see them if the, you know, if the grass is tall or the weeds and I would always step in some, but at the end of that was grandma's house. And if I could get to grandma's house, it was worth it because there was always a smell of fresh bread and, and um, it was always just, um, it reminded me of just the fragrance of the Lord and what it's like to come into God's house. It was like me as a kid, get, you know, going through all the whatever and we have to go through all the manure of the world and all the manure of the week and all of the manure of traffic and all of that that we have to climb over and climb past and get past and and uh, all of those obstacles but when we can get to the end of it and we can come into a place where it's peaceful and um, it's a, just a breath of fresh air. And for me, at grandma's, it was a breath, the smell of fresh bread or whatever she was baking. And, um, and I was, you know, I just loved going over there. And, um, 
and you know, she was there and that was always worth it because she was there and um, she was such a special special example in my life and um, she would just stop everything when any of us walked in the door my my mom's here tonight and i really appreciate that my mother um so she knows what i'm talking about she baked her bread every other day and <clears throat> and uh <clears throat> but just going over there you know it, it it was just i knew what i i knew what to expect and i was always uh greeted and she would just drop everything and when I got there, or my sisters got there, or who, you know, my mom or dad, whoever got to her house, that was the most important thing. And she would just drop whatever she was doing, and she was always working on something. And um, she worked hard as an immigrant. Um, first, you know, our first generation, first, and uh, from Yugoslavia, and. Uh, so we, we got our work, a strong work ethic from my mom, my grandparents, and my parents, and I'm very, very thankful for that. I wasn't back then when I was doing all those chores, but I am now. And, um, and but it, um, that's, it just reminds me of how our father is, you know, that's him, that's, it's worth when we, we can expect to walk into a place and we know he's going to be there and he's going to give us his full attention. He's excited to see us and he's excited to be with us and he waits for us. And, um, and so it, it's just a little analogy, but that's just what Wednesday night reminds me of. It's just getting through that field, but knowing who's waiting at the other end and, um, anxious to see you and God is anxious to see you he's anxious to be with you he's anxious anytime you call upon him he is excited and he waits for you we always think we're waiting on God but he's waiting for us and um, I remember when the kids were little I couldn't wait for them most parents love when their kids were asleep but I would go in I couldn't wait for them to wake up when they were really little um, in the teen years, I was like, please sleep, <laughs> sleep, <laughs> or I don't know. But um, and when they were little, I just couldn't wait for them to get up. They were so cute and cuddly and fun, and, and I just wait and wait. I couldn't wait for them to I go in and peek in, and they were still asleep and, you know, make a little noise or something. But, um, but when they would get up, I would be so happy and so excited because I knew our day was going to begin and I would get to spend my day with them. And that's how our Father is with us. Um, he is happy when we wake up and, and when we give him our attention first and don't just ignore him and go about, oh my gosh, I'm up five minutes late and oh, the snooze button again, the snooze button again, the snooze button again. And, and then it's rush, 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 and, and, uh, and then he's just been waiting and waiting, and we haven't even gotten a hello yet. And, uh, you know, I always think about, it was a poem a long time ago, and I, I remember that, and I always give God thanks when I wake up that I woke up. Um, because every day is a gift. Because somewhere, someplace, somebody didn't wake up. And so I'm grateful that I get to have another day. And uh, when you've been through some stuff, you are grateful for that. And so I encourage you <laughs> to, re to be mindful of that and to remember that when you get up and before you go to bed, and that's one of the things I'll, I will say, I, I have to talk about that before we leave, but is that he is first our father. And I, I wanted to talk about 
you know, our Father, which art in heaven, that first we recognize him as our Father, that that's who we're praying to, that's who we're recognizing. And that's what Jesus said. Now, this is why it's, when I put this as the second most important prayer you will, you will pray, the reason is, the first one is your prayer of salvation. But when Jesus says, this is how you should pray, and the Gospels, I think it's Matthew 6, um, 9. And when he says it, then it's the second most important prayer. And so it's really worth studying. And I, I studied it and I really like some time to really talk about each, each line is very, very significant. And, um, but to start out with our Father, not, you know, God, maker of the heavens and the earth, or, you know, almighty, and making him seem so far away and so powerful, and that God that, that I always thought was so far from me that I could never get to because he was like this great and powerful Oz and the Wizard of Oz, and um, that he he didn't recognize me because I was just amongst a lot of people on earth and it wasn't possible to really have that personal relationship that I, I wanted to have. But now I long to have it because I now recognize that he is father and he is Abba and Abba adopts orphans and our sin orphans all of us. Our sin separates us and uncovers us. And that's what I was talking about this in chapel last Thursday, that that's why it's so important that we are urged in the scriptures to care for the widows and orphans because they have lost their covering. And their covering and being their, their husband or parents. And, um, and there's no one there. And it's important that we are there to be the ones to be a, a covering, but to cover them up, to keep them warm, to keep them safe like a parent does. When you tiptoe out in the middle of the night, your kids have kicked the covers off and you always are the, you know, mommies usually cover them back up and tuck them in and keep them warm, and safe and com comfortable and feeling, just feeling safe and loved in their homes. And, um, that's so, that's God because we're orphaned without him. And we don't have that feeling of safety. We don't have that feeling of warmth or comfort. And we're homeless without him. We have no place to call home because home is with him. And so without him, we are homeless in our rags of our old life and our rags of sin and sightlessness because we are blind to it. And so I am thankful for church camp when I was 13 and I knelt at an altar and the preacher called me and all of us sinners. He didn't package it back then like they do now with all the marketing teams that come into churches and tell you how to market the gospel to be culturally correct. And I, I, I do want to give, I, I haven't really got to see him a whole lot, but I do want to say Sunday morning's message was awesome. If you didn't get it or you weren't here, you need to get it or look, watch online it was really like so on target and everybody needs to hear it's a true answer and revelation to all of this in culture culture engaging the culture being relevant and finally there's an answer to how we can do that and um, we can still reach people but we don't have to throw God out of the mix in order to do it and um, our market so they didn't market the gospel back then and package it so 
because today the way they package is it is all about this life and how he'll make life better for you and they don't talk about eternal life and back then it was just that's all it was if you want to go to heaven it's john 3 16 and um and of course the rapture was huge it had just really started to be talked about the end times and i thought the rapture was going to happen in a second and all of us did and there were all these movies out you know thief in the night and everybody was going to you know i thought i, I just thought it was going to happen I was like, well, I'd like to be married and have kids before it's going to happen, you know. So every night, I, every night I'd pray, oh, Jesus, there's a sin in my heart. I just, please don't let, I don't want to be left. I won't take the mark of the beast. <laughs> because the movie taught, you know, shows how everybody taking the mark of the beast and how terrible it is. And they're starving unless they do. And, oh, it's, yeah, and they show it to a bunch of kids. And so it was a fun time. <laughs> but you know it did make an impression and um, I think that's what we've lost you know because we we are trying to get people in pews and in youth groups and and things and how can we do that in kid kid church and and how can we do that and uh, it, we have to go through all of the, jump through all of these hoops now and compete with culture because back then there was nothing really exciting to do. In, I mean, you had three TV channels. You had no iPods, iPads, devices, cell phones. <clears throat> you know, there, there was nothing. That's why kids were always playing outside. And, um, you know, thank God for that. Or we wouldn't have... Oh, so many of the, you know, the great literature and a lot of the great poetry and probably math and science and that kind of stuff I don't like, but, um, you know, because people were actually outside and dreaming and imagining and looking at clouds and, and playing games and using their imagination because we didn't have stuff. And we have so much stuff now. And... Um, and all it does is clutter your life and clutter your brain and clutter and just push God out because <clears throat> there's no room for him. And um, so anyway, I'm just thankful that the gospel that I heard was that I was a sinner and I was going to go to hell. And that was that. If I wanted to live eternal life, um, I needed to accept Jesus as my savior. And... And it was like, well, then what? I remember talking to the, well, then, then what? I mean, what do I do now? And, um, you know, he talked about leading a, 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 a Christian life and being a Christian. And, and I had been one my whole life, so it, because everybody else was crying, and I was like, well, why am I not crying? And, um, and he, he said, well, you've been in church, and this isn't a real huge transformation for you, but you will you will see change in your heart. And I did, you know, finally, I understood. And, um, but I'm just um, saddened by the way now it is, we don't have conversions. I mean, we do not have that moment and, and learn that this is gonna be a transformative time. And I pray that every time, Lord, that we have an altar Call, Lord, let them feel you. Let them feel something different. Let them feel a change going on. Let them feel your love pour into them. So this just doesn't seem like another, you know, ploy to get people in an altar, to get people in pews, and to get churches full. And um, that's been such a sad, unfortunate goal because the thing was to have a big church and... The mega church was the thing, and um, I always remember one pastor saying we grew to love the church and hate the people, and uh, that's what we just wanted to grow big churches so we could say we had big churches, and the people just were numbers, and uh, I don't feel like that, 
And I know the father doesn't feel like that because we're children. And um, in a family, your kids are not just numbers. You're number one, number two, number three. They have names, like we have names. And our names are written with indelible ink. To think of that in the Lamb's Book of Life, that God himself, as Father, knows you by name, calls you by name. He will go chase after you, calling your name if need be. And um, if we could package him that way, um, we'd have conversions because who doesn't want love? <clears throat> who doesn't need fathered like that? And he is Abba to the orphans and he is God Almighty and he is Adonai. And, and my, my favorite is Emmanuel. Well, my favorite was really Abba, but um, Emmanuel, God with us. I mean, that is just, he is with us. And that is something we have you know, we actually have to just practice the thought of that, that he is with us at every moment. If we did, and it really became a fiber of our, our thought life and our behavior and you know, everything that, that we thought that we did, that our minds, our mindset, um, I mean, we it would keep us from sin. It would keep us from just... And we keep our mouths shut or our mouths open when they need to be. And um, we would really change our world if we really got grabbed a hold of God with us and really walked around like we were walking with Emmanuel, God with us, that he was so near to us and that we had communion and he was part of our community and <clears throat> he's just not so far away but um but I want to move on and uh but it says hallowed then be thy name and real quickly just to set apart <clears throat> that name to hallow means to honor and and some other things I forget but uh <laughs> I don't have my glasses on, but um, <clears throat> I looked up some things. But, um, but basically to set apart as we need to be set apart. And, um, and when we hallow that name, that's when we can fill in the blanks. And we can say, he is, that was in my staff email today. He is, that is, God is, um, fill in the blank. He is Jehovah Rapha. We have to know the names of God. Um, I had Dr. Summerall's old book out today, looking through it, and it was just a joy to see and even read his writing again. Um, but you know, he is the one who heals me. He is not sickness. He is health. He is not. So in, in my letter today, I was saying, you know, if we fill in the blanks, it has to be he is and what he is not. He is healing. He is not sickness. He is prosperity. He is not debt and depravity. And um, you know, I could just go on. He is peace. He is not pressure and stress. And so whatever we need, we set that name apart. And we hallow that name. It's holy. And um, we revere and reverence that name because he is with us and he is father and we respect our fathers. I'm just going to throw this in. If you are not submitted to someone, if you're not under authority to someone, you will have no covering. You are completely without that protection and everyone has to be submitted I don't care if you're the owner of your company um, we have to 
be submitted to authority. And when someone loves you, even when the Bible says to be submitted to your husbands, and that was always, as I've talked about, really rough for me to think about. Um, but when you look at it in, in the light of um, someone who that is there to love and to protect you, or your parents, um, then their authority is easier to accept that way. And when God's word tells us what to do and what not to do, it's, yes, his word has that authority, but that authority also gives us like authority and we can use that authority in his name. Just like when I take the credit card in <laughs> my husband's name, I'm using his name because we're in a covenant and I'm allowed to use his credit card whenever I want. Isn't that right, dear? You said it in church. Yes. <laughs> please get that on tape, please. I want to make sure. Well, I, I did have a, rel I mean, I did have a huge, like defining moment when we were on our honeymoon actually, and I had like $30 with me, I think. And at the, we were getting ready to leave, and um, Disney. Disney, yeah, we went to Disney World, because, well, we're just big kids. And we went there with our kids every year. And um, that's where I wanted to go. But um, we were getting ready to leave, and I said, you know, he was packing up, and, and um, <laughs> he packed himself then. Um, and he said, uh, I said, well, I'm going to go down the gift shop and get my nieces and nephews little souvenirs. And, and I'm thinking little keychains is all I'm going to be able to afford because we've got about $30 and, of my money. And he said, oh, okay, well, my wallet's on the dresser. And it was just like, <gasps> uh, I felt like the angels started singing and... I could see clouds and like the glory was shining on the wallet. And it was like, all of a sudden, it was like, oh, his money is my money now. He's got more than I do. So, and I have, proud to say I've operated in that covenant for 30 some years and without, without shame, so. I have never said, oh, that's no, okay. No. No. But I, it really was a moment, and I got stuffed animals and all kinds of stuff just for everybody. Everybody got a present. But, but it was, um, but that's, that's why I, that's why I, just as a side throw note, um, but, but throw your, your glove up is, Deborah would say, but, and catch this, but that's why tithing is so important. Because when you enter into that covenant, you get to operate in his name, and you have his name, and, um, and you're in a covenant with him. And so when you go to ask him for something, he knows you're in covenant. He wouldn't let just anybody take that wallet off the dresser. But I was allowed to because I was in covenant. And um, so sometimes when we're looking at our finances and wondering what's happening, it's because you know, that covenant's not there. And um, your salvation, your co covenant, that one's intact. But that covenant is not. And I'll just tell you, it's something that you can depend on when you are a tither. Um, you can bring that to God's remembrance, and I have many, many times in, in a crisis said, that's all you ask for. It's not much. If he asked for the clothes out of our closet, we'd you know, have no problem with that, or some couple pair of shoes, or some things out of our cabinet food, but it's that money, boy, that's hard to let go of, because we're thinking, well, I need that, I could use that, I could, 
You know, I like what my neighbors said. They said, we have ours direct deposited and we don't even miss it. We don't know what it is. We don't even care. We don't even miss it. And <clears throat> if we realize that 10% is, we could really live with, without it. In, even when I was talking to somebody and they said, well, I mean, we'd have to, you know, if I did that, I'd have to eat soup. And pastor was standing with me and it was really our conversation and he just chimed in. I was like, he doesn't ever do that, but he just chimed in and said, if you don't, you'll be eating soup for the rest of your life. If you do, you won't be eating soup for long. So anyway, I just threw that in there, but, um, but yeah. So let's see, I was at, let me get back to my little prayer, our Father. We hallowed his name. But what I want to get to the, the real crux of all of this is give us this day our daily bread. And that is about his sufficiency. And that is about when she said that to me, when Julie said that to me. I thought that is the answer to, it echoes a statement of, that Dr. Summerall always made, that is the answer to stress, worry, planning, not planning, it just says it all. His grace is sufficient, it's present tense. It doesn't say it was sufficient or it will be sufficient, but that it is sufficient. Grace is favor, yes. And if grace, though, is a power that is at work. It is working for us. It is working for us in our favor. And so that sufficiency is for this day. And Dr. Summerall always said two things. He said, I give Lester Summerall 30 minutes a day and the rest belongs to Jesus. And that is why he and the spiritual lineage of this place operated in the kind of spiritual power that they did because they weren't watching TV, they weren't, there wasn't you know, <laughs> a lot to do either, but I, just, I read the things that they write in just absolute awe. And um, there wasn't, you know, saying that there wasn't much to do back then is not an excuse, but we do have that challenge that there is so much, especially for our kids, that we have to compete with all of these devices that are, I mean, they had devices, but they're, they were different. They were vices and devices of the enemy. But we have all of these things at our fingertips and, um, and it can be a wonderful thing as long as it's in check. But it should, it can't ever come before. It, it can't ever become beyond what we need and um, push God aside and down on the list. And then, you know, again, we are wondering why this isn't happening in our life and why this is going on like that. And, and it's like, well, <clears throat> I don't know. You haven't talked to me today at all, but you do know you can quote all the lines from a song or a show or you know the movie that you saw or and I'm, not, I'm saying all those things are great but everything is in moderation and God is first and foremost yeah. and if we really did just give ourselves 30 minutes a day and he got the rest you know not all people are called to be a Dr. Lester Summerall but those people left a legacy because they lived that way. And such a discipline. Um, it was just who they were. It was just not like they even had to try. I mean, I, I didn't know Smith Wigglesworth, but it was Dr. Summerall was just like, he didn't try. It was just him. It was who he was. And um, the other thing he said is, 
stress. I don't have stress because I only think about what I have to do. I don't think about what I did or what I have to do tomorrow. I only think what's right in front of me. And I thought, oh my gosh, if I could do that, because I'm always thinking of, oh, I got so much to do. This week is packed. I have got this list and this list and this list. And look at this calendar. And, and I'm fretting over, I'm, I'm not going to get this done. I'm not going to get to this. And, and then I get overwhelmed and then my peace is wrecked. My joy is out the window. I'm... <laughs> I'm having a meltdown like I did the other day at Nervy Break. I had a little meltdown the other day. I'm like, I just can't do this. I just can't. And the pastor's like, okay, let's just let's look at this one by one and let's see how we can fix this. But as I was just, it was, but I, it's because I was looking at everything ahead of me instead of what was right before me just that day. And what happens and, and I'm guilty of it. Instead of me spending that hour, the two hours of melting down because I was not going to get to everything, I missed time with my, hanging out with my son that night or talking to pastor with, on another topic that would have been enjoyable rather than planning. And, and naturally we have to do plan. I mean, I'm not talking about that, but not fretting. And if we, if we plan wisely, and I'm telling you, the t phones are such a time stealer. And I, I, for me, it, I have to discipline, and it, it's like little by little by little. I, I, I love them and I hate them. <laughs> uh, the convenience of being able to, the, the safety part of it is great. The, to be able to communicate is great, but the text messaging, sometimes it's necessary and then sometimes it's such an, it's so annoying and such a nuisance and, and then it's a temptation. I used to, every morning, I, well, let me go down my Twitter feed. I need to, I need to, I need, there might be something important I miss, might miss. Well, there's never really anything. If it's that important, it's not going to be on Twitter. It's going to be somebody will call you. They're not going to tweet, you know, I am sick and I need you to help me uh, uh, or something on Twitter. Um, so it was stealing my time then. And then so at night, that was the last thing I do. Well, I'll go through Twitter or Instagram. And then I don't care. I've said it before. I, every time I look at Instagram, I get, I get mad. I, I always just say it. I just, I'm just going to be real. I always get mad about something. I'll see somebody that, you know, you know, I just want to see what's not pictured, not just what's pictured. I want to see the not pictured. Let me see a selfie when you don't, aren't all glammed up and, or let me see what your house really looks like. <laughs> You know, let me see you not on vacation and, you know, let me see a picture of you in a fight with your husband, not smoochy poochy and talking about how much you adore each other, or, you know, and food and why do people take pictures of food? I don't know. Food and food and then I'll see people out and thinking, why weren't they at church? I see that they're out. Yeah, they should have, especially, I was noticed that in Bible school, Valor students, I went, well, why weren't they at chapel? Because they're at breakfast right now, I see. So, or I'll see somebody that used to go, or, or somebody that went, um, you know, graduated from Valor, and now they're in a ministry, and I'm like, they got about as much, you know, business and ministry as I do being a ballerina, you know, and, you know, just, I'm just saying what I just saying what I think. I mean, not everyone is called just because they went to Bible college. Am I right? But I'm off base. So I, mean, I mean, some, you know, some. I mean, some are obviously and have wonderful ministries, but some leave and you know, in the middle of the year, which is 
right, right there tells you that that's not God because he always finishes what he starts. What they, <clears throat> what they leave in the middle of the year to start a storefront and with four or five other students or, or they've gone down to some crazy praise thing or, you know, always looking for something else, you know, that's, that's more an experience. And if you just stay where God has you, you will have the experience. The devil would like nothing more than to tempt you to get out of God's plan because then he'll get you off of his path and your steps are ordered on his path, not on, the de not on any other path. A good man's steps are ordered of the Lord. Well, that's only going to be on the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So that's going to be on his path. And so that's the path we have to stay on. Even if this one looks more tempting or this one has more money or that is absolutely the apple and you have to avoid it. And, um, you, if you're under authority and I always love they come, we're going to go start a church pastor. Now, what do you think about that? I mean, we know God said so. And he, he well, you should have come to me first. But then he's, he's, he, he, if you're going to do something, you go to your spiritual authority first and ask their opinion then, not do it and then ask a blessing afterwards. But that doesn't work that way. But... That's often what happens. I don't know why I threw that in. There must be, it's close to graduation. It must be Valor, for a Valor student out there. Must be. But, um, but anyway, yeah, well, <clears throat> we had, um, I mean, it's, again, it's why it's so important that father that we pray to, that we know him. Because when you know someone, you know the way they behave, you know the way they talk, you know their voice, you can hear it, you can know their mode of behavior, and then it's recognizable what their will is, even in the midst of storm. And I remember the, you know, one of the first couple years we were, it was one of the first major attacks that we had and we um, were being accused of everything. It was back in the 80s and, you know, there was the, what do you call them? The Jim and Tammy Faye days and Jerry Falwell and that, all that, scandal that was going on, Jimmy Swagger and all of that. So all preachers were being lumped into that, which is unfair because there's, there's corrupt people in, in all lines of work, but there are also very wonderful, good servants in lines of work, like our police, like, you know, um, that one ever big. Um, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, just because there's a few corrupt police officers doesn't mean that every officer is corrupt. Um, just because there's a few corrupt politicians doesn't mean every politician is corrupt. Um, so we, you know, we have to be discerning. And again, that comes with um, our knowledge, our discipline, and learning what our vices are that become devices of the enemy to use against us. Just like me with the Twitter, that was a time stealer. So I had to start putting that, that phone down at night and saying what I'll share with you a little later, what became the last thing I do at night. So, um, because what you do in the first thing, the first thing in the morning and the last thing at night is extremely important. So you're setting the tone of your day and I'll just tell you in a minute, but just this story real quick. We were in the midst of this, just, I mean, it was just a rainstorm of just, I was, it was the first one, so it was new to me, and I was just 
devastated. And I remember so devastated that I actually picked the phone up and called Dr. Sumrall for prayer. I mean, that's gutsy. And because he, I mean, he could have said, why aren't you standing by faith? And, but I didn't, he so, so graciously prayed for me. I was just crying and, um, you know, I didn't like being called a liar and a thief and a, it was, if you read my book, you know, it's called Scarlet O'Hara, the story's in there, one of them, because, <clears throat> you know, they were saying we were robbers and thieves and blah, 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 and all these things, dishonest, and um, it was just all, you know, found to be untrue eventually, of course, but at the time, it wasn't fun to be I was standing in my house that had no furniture in it. <laughs> I thought, well, if we were going to steal money, we would have stolen enough to furnish our house. But uh, here we stand with, you know, no furniture in it. <clears throat> and we had just built our house. And I was holding Austin at the time. I'm sure Ashton was climbing somewhere. And um, if you were in chapel, you'd know what that meant. But uh, she was a very active little one. And I was holding Austin, and I remember... Um, I was just crying, but I thought, well, God's going to be so impressed because I just said, God, no matter what, like Scarlett O'Hara, no matter what the devil does, I will never, ever quit serving you. I will stay saved no matter what. And he audibly is the first time I've ever heard my name. I can tell you exactly where I was standing at the pantry in the kitchen right by the desk. And he said, Jody, the devil doesn't want your soul. He wants your effectiveness. He doesn't care about your soul. And it was just, my goodness, all he wants is for us to be ineffective. He wants to do whatever he can to render us ineffective. He doesn't care about populating hell or heaven. He just says his kingdom's here. And he just wants his kingdom to go the way he wants it because he, fear, he fears us. He fears love because that's something he can't come against. He can fight a lot of things, but he can't fight love because that's, that's, that's God. God is love. And if we are love, then he's, he's up against God and he is not gonna win that. But if he can get in and sneak in and just like a snake, and somehow get in and steal our time and get a little bit of this and a little bit of that, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And soon, and, you know, you just keep going down, 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 and the, your effectiveness keeps wearing. And the strength of your effectiveness just keeps going. And then you're tempted to leave in the middle of Bible college because it gets too hard. Or you're tempted like... At that time, we got this offer from this church, and I won't say the state, but we got this offer. And it was just, okay, it was, all he passed her how to do was preach once, one service. He got a car, the house was fully furnished mansion, I'm just gonna say. And he was gonna make, I'll just say back, okay, and it was night, I mean, it's a lot of money, $600,000. And I'm like, oh, God has, look at God, look what the Lord has done. <laughs> he has moved us out of the store and moving us on to, I mean, moving us out of this horrible city that hates us. And here, you know, and I just thought, oh, this was just, I mean, I really hate leaving my family and everything, but I just can't stand the store. I mean, I can't stand going. I, it was to the point like I got made fun of and like being in the grocery store was terrible. And, and I just didn't, you know, now it's like no big deal because once you get used to it, but um, unless you touch my kids, then, then watch out. But, um, but the first, it's like pastor says the first, the first time they take your innocence, it's gone. And then it's, after that, it's, it's different. And so, you know, we're, we're very violated. And so I thought, oh, this is it. And 
you know, I'm thinking pastor's going to walk in and say, okay, back, that, back up, we're moving. And good. I'm like, you know, and they said, you can just travel, do whatever you want. Just come in on Sunday and preach. And, and I'm like, oh, this is unbelievable. And, uh, and he said, um, that's not the will of God. That's, I'm not going to live in anything but the perfect will of God. I'm like, he said, I'm not going to live in the permissive will of God. And that's, you know, I won't explain that, but I'm like the permissive will of God. Well, I know what that means. I mean, it means it's, you know, not really God's plan, but he will love you and bless you. But it's not his perfect plan where his, anyway. So I'm thinking, so he won't, huh? And I, so I said to him, I'm like, okay, so if we're in the perfect will of God, how much worse could the permissive will be? I mean, <laughs> I mean, the perfect will is pretty, pretty ugly. So let's just try this permissive will stuff <laughs> and we'll see. But his no has always meant no and his yes has always been meant yes and I'm thankful because we would have been. And you know, I remember what he said. You may not remember you saying this, but I do. You said, yeah, I could go move there and have that and I might die of cancer. I remember that so clearly. So, you know, we need the hand of God on our lives even when it gets tough. Because when you know his grace is sufficient for you, you just got that day to think about. You don't have to think about how is this, how's the storm gonna look a month from now? Just how is it looking today? And I know it's gonna be okay today because his grace is sufficient and I'm fully confident that I can get through today. Because I know God, my Father, has given me my daily bread. And what I need is my portion, which we call a helping. So I just need my helping, my present help in this time of trouble. Present help. He doesn't say future help or past help. He says I'm the present help in time of trouble. So I just need my present help to get me through this storm. So today's storm is what it is, but I am fully persuaded that I am able because God is able. And so I'm confident and I'm going to, I'm going to close with this. I really am when I find it. Um, no, I, it's right here. So I'm not going to leave you with, okay, then that's great. But how, cause I hate when pre preachers not present, not you excluded once you get sure for him. But when preachers tell you, people will say all this and then you're like, and then what are we supposed to do with this? So I'm giving you a how to, cause I always say, <clears throat> I don't talk about it's not a you, 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 like everybody. that's just come with me on my pilgrimage um, that we're all on and just come with me because I'm, I'm just with, with everybody else. I'm, um, as are all preachers, some of them act like they've just got it all together. Um, so, two, a few things to do in your quest to know your father is to learn. If I wanted to know about Charles Haddon Spurgeon or C.S. Lewis, he's my favorite author probably, I would read his biography. So if I want to know more about God, I would read his biography 
that it's not a biography. It's a living, breathing, life-giving source. It is alive. I mean, if it could, it would have a heartbeat. That's how alive it is. And when you're in anything, you can ask God, I have need of scripture. Give me, give me something from your word to stand on. And today, what's my daily bread out of this? What is, what is my daily bread from this? What's my portion? And it could be one verse. And so get a verse this week or every day, but even just for one week, get a verse. And um, I can't find it. My, I wrote down some things, but um, when you want to know someone, you obviously need to spend time with them spend time with them and um, journal write about them write what you're feeling write what you're feeling a lot of times when I'm upset if I write it and get it out it's better to do that than to get it out on somebody else we take it out on others because we don't want we don't want stuff bottled up inside it's got to come out because anger has movement and and it's, it's got to come out. So instead of it, us vomiting out on other people, we can, we can always pray, of course. And that was the other thing, pray. But, you know, writing things down, you don't have to be, you know, William Shakespeare, just write. Um, it's, that's just one thing. And music is an amazing comfort. Um, good music um, there's times I just literally say I need to get in my car <laughs> and because you really can't sometimes at home but um, I just need it's my little sanctuary in my car and I just need to get in there and put my music on and just you know drive some backs back roads so nobody sees me singing along <laughs> and I get embarrassed or bouncing along if I'm in the praise mood and got some the crayon or something but or if I'm worshiping and I've got my phone lit up and um, worshiping the Lord or um, but it's just another way of acknowledging him and just being with him and feeling his presence and his presence is always in music and um, so it's just just ways to to be close to him and to to have your reaction be God first instead of what our natural response is what's this supernatural response to a situation instead of our knee-jerk response and I you know talked about that in chapel I got upset about a situation and the first thing I wanted to do was text somebody instead I took a little walk around my room and just and you know got my about my breath and got my self together and my emotions in check and um, and did make a really bad mistake and break a relationship because um or harm one because i was going to express my anger and um and again it was something somebody forwarded me that somebody wrote on social media so social media is not a platform for us to puke or <laughs> i shouldn't use vomit and puke but um it's just that's what it feels like to me it's just like i I'm in a shadow somewhere with my little keyboard and I can say whatever I want and nobody will, you know, here's my caustic message or my message, but it's implying this and implying that. And um, it's, it's sometimes so misused and abused and it's a tool to hurt people. And um, it's... Uh, it's why I don't, I don't, I don't like to know. Like if it's out there and someone comes to me, well, you should 
hear what somebody put on social media about you. I don't want to know. Just like, ignorance is bliss to me. So just don't tell me. But um, but uh, I'm trying to find the story. Oh, ask yourself, how do I know him more? What must I give up to fellowship? And if you will read Joni's journal, well, it's not Joni's journal anymore, it's, um, my blog, Daydream Believer, but if you will read this last four-part series, Grit and Grace, I talk about get what, what you need to give up. And, and I spent a long time writing that because I was very painfully honest and transparent. I had told a lot of stuff up I told on myself a lot and some things I had to learn the hard way and I saw that I was doing and um, in the seasons of our lives. And so I encourage you to read that. Pastor read it and I made him, but <laughs> I did. I did make, well, I've said, I, if I have a th I've thought something theologically, maybe I just I have him look and make sure, because I'm not a theologian, so. Um, but let me end with this. Uh, I just thought this was so awesome. It was actually just a little, in this journal that I have, there's just a little paragraph. It was just a little story. But it is something that, I hope catches on and it's going to be my ha new hashtag. Um, choose HWLW each week. And, okay, I'm not finding the story. I've got this part. Um, there it is. Thank you. Thank you so much. So sweet. HWLW is an old slogan going back to the early days of Dawson Trotman, a founder of the Navigators. The letters stand for His Word, The Last Word. Trotman developed a great system of disciplining men in the military. Occasionally, he would take the men he was training on week-long retreats. As the men lay in their bunks at the end of the day, instead of saying good night or sleep well, Trotman would shout out HWLW, his word, the last word. It would be a reminder for the men to go to sleep thinking about and meditating on some verse God had given them that day. Trotman knew that the last dominant conscious thought in the human mind at the end of the day when it inevitably simmer in the subconscious during sleep, and you think about that, and help shape the attitude and personality of the heart. That's how much power what we see and what we hear have. And he was right. If you want to hide God's word in your heart, Go to sleep while meditating on a verse of scripture. It seeps into your subconscious mind and helps shape your soul. You'll sleep better and wake up the next morning more refreshed. Charles Spurgeon used to say that Bible verses make good pillows. And that was written by, written by Robert J. Morgan. But H-W-L-W, his word, last word. And so I thought about that and thought, and start doing that. And so every night, and I, I usually do, that is a lot, I do read my Bible at night, it's, and I keep special things in it, and it's, it's my favorite one. So you can see it's, it's been used, but it's like a teddy bear. Um, I love, I love God's word. I love it. It's him. That's why. It's him. So I asked the Lord to give me a scripture. And it was Micah 7, 7. 
But as for me, I will look to the Lord and confident in him, I will keep watch. I will wait with hope and expectancy for the God of salvation will hear me. And I think that's just a really good way just to punctuate everything I talked about. Our daily bread, God hallowing his name, setting ourselves apart so that he can be set apart. Living our lives holy because he is holy. And looking at each day as our grace being sufficient. And then we won't be overwhelmed by any storm. We won't falter. We won't fall away. We won't be captivated by something that looks and sounds easier, that tickles our ears. Those little dainty morsels will say, I can stand through this. I've got sufficiency and confidence in this day that my Lord's going to see me through. I will look to the Lord confident in him, keeping watch with hope and expectancy for God, my God of salvation will hear me. He's hearing my cry, no matter what it is, no matter how little and no matter how big. And even if things don't change the next day or the next day or the next day, it doesn't shake my faith. It may shake me a little bit, but it will never shake my faith because I know God never fails, because love never fails. God always wins, love always wins. And HWLW, his word, last word. So. I pray that we all meditate on the second greatest prayer. And I'm going to start my mornings by saying that. Um, looking online, there's some really good commentary on it. Um, but Julie, thank you for teaching me about manna. And because every day since then, I've said the manna I need today is this or that. And you certainly have been of or an inspiration. Yeah. This is another thing I do. I have just cards, affirmation of cards. I just read, I'll make up some for a couple of weeks, just what I, whatever I'm dealing with to just have scripture. And I read through those at night. And that every time you do that, the word just becomes a part of you and you walk in it. And like I said to the students, if it's not in there, you can't use it as a weapon. You've got to have it in there in order to call upon it when in time of trouble and be able to use it. And um, so the word is so very important. That's why HWLW. So tonight, remember that before you go to bed, turn off your cell phone and from the TV, the news. Oh, that's really, I used to do that, but. HWLW. You'll have a wonderful sleep tonight. And uh, while that word is seeping in and shaping your beautiful heart for God. So thank you. I hope I didn't go over. So. What was the scripture? Micah 7 7, right? Micah 7 7. Stretch one time really good. You can be seated, Elkhart, we love you. And online, we love you. And we will see you on Sunday morning. We have, uh, what, what were, HWLW. His word, last word. His word, last word.